Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video of me talking about the movies I watched this month, last month. Let's get into it. This might be the last one I'm doing for a little while because I'm working on another project that I might talk about later in the video. Stay tuned or skip to the end. I don't know. Do it. Do what you want. I don't know. First movie of March I watched was Space Man, directed by Johan Rank. It came out this year, 2024. It's Adam Sandler's next big dramatic role after Uncut Gems. And as a movie, it feels like it's trying to do Interstellar, but not. The biggest thing about the film is that it has a lot of engaging premises that start engaging and may or may not go through its full arc, but it just doesn't feel very fulfilling. Like for example, the Paul Dano spider, one of the main reasons that I ended up watching this movie, it, is a very interesting design. I really like how it's sort of a spider, but it's also an alien and it's like very fleshy, but like it has like a spider body plan. It's just very cool. The, the, the creepiest thing about this creature was the mouth part, because it has like almost a human mouth in between these like pedipalps and it kind of just looks like butt cheeks and just like a little asshole, but also like the dialogue between Adam Sandler's character and this character is just very meandering and kind of just going over and over what the movie is about about v visually very good film the effects for the spider superb the stuff that they have in space i think is, is is really nicely done i don't know it just felt like it was shallow and like tending to be way more dramatic and important than it actually was that's all i can really say the next movie i watched was nope for the sixth time <laughs> directed by uh, our lord and savior jordan peele the only reason i i watched uh this movie for a sixth time was because a friend messaged me on discord being like hey we're, we're about to watch nope do, do you want to watch and i'm like hell yeah i'm not doing anything <laughs> i'll watch this again especially because it was their first time so i wanted to see the reaction really not much more i can say about this movie other than it's amazing everything about it, it's amazing it's definitely one of my favorite movies if not my favorite movie if you have not seen it check out my nope theory i speculate where the sort of alien presence presence in the movie comes from. I won't spoil it, but I, I do want you to watch the movie and check out that video. It was actually the first video on this channel that get over a thousand views. I definitely recommend you watch that one. Five stars, Angel, five stars. Thank you. Next up is 2023's own Poor Things, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos. This is another movie where I feel like I can't really say much that hasn't been said already. You know, after all the Oscar buzz and just the buzz of the movie itself, it, it is a feminist masterpiece. Bella Baxter is just an amazing character. The way she goes through her arc and just how well executed it is, just her growing up in this truncated span of time, and it's just it's just really well done. You know, <laughs> there's not much I could say. Of course, Willem Dafoe's performance was 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 superb as god <laughs> as bella puts it in, in in the movie obviously emma stone i i think she deserved the oscar win there were definitely some up there contenders like you could argue snubs but I think she won this deservedly. The semi twist towards the end of the movie, I think really caught me off guard. I, I, I don't know, I guess I just wasn't expecting that to happen. It, it, it's the logical extension of, of how the plot would go. I'm not gonna spoil it in case you haven't seen, but it's just very good. I, I highly recommend if you have not seen this movie. Next up is The Text. It came out this year, 2024, directed by Joel Haver, a fellow YouTuber and a big inspiration for me. This film was actually his rendition of his film, a feature length film during the Oscars challenge. It's about these friends after they had a big party last night and one of the friends who's a little off texted his ex and it's sort of just this whole thing. And it just builds and builds and builds and it, it's really good. This film was done entirely in one take. I mean, I think they had done actually three takes overall over the three hours of the Oscars airing. Like the piano music at the start and how it kind of, kind of comes in and out, crazy because one take, you know? There was no real breaks of character uh, from what I could tell. Just the rawness of the whole thing was was just so engaging because like not only is this like an awkward situation with friends but it's also like a one take film you know it's just very visceral in that sense i really enjoyed the not to spoil the graduate style ending i i'm, I'm pretty sure it's a reference to that the, the two happy lovers at the very end i am a little disappointed that i didn't end up making something for the challenge i did end up doing something last year it wasn't a feature length film only ended up being like 15 minutes me and my friends started to do something this year but i had just come home from work and it was a whole thing i'm making excuses i wish i could have done it either way though i'm happy i watched this one and i hope you watched watch it too. I'm going to put it in the, in the link in the description. It's free to watch here on YouTube. I also recommend you just check out Joel Haver. He's great. 
makes week well he was making weekly short films now he's making monthly feature length films it's this whole thing he's just a really cool filmmaker check him out and in case you couldn't tell i'm doing this while i'm editing because i realized that i didn't shoot this part somehow i skipped it i don't know. next up is a childhood classic cloudy with a chance of meatballs came out in 2009 directed by phil lord and chris miller you can see the seeds of spider-verse in cloudy with a chance of meatballs in the sense that there are some individual like stunning visual shots i couldn't really find good images to to show on screen just just watch the movie and you'll see what i mean like there's this one shot of the giant meatball in the sky to spoil it it's just like awe inspiring <laughs> at least it was to me when i saw that as a kid it's mostly just the fact that they were able to do it despite the technical limitations of the time you can kind of see some of the cracks in it through some of the background characters not having like as much development as some of the main characters like you can really see it if you pay attention as a kid i had no idea a lot of the comedy still holds especially the character earl the cop who as a kid i had no idea was was voiced by fucking mr t like that's that's so crazy another character i i didn't realize was by an actor that i would later know is flint voiced by bill Hader. like like that's so crazy to me like now uh like i, I love that character as a kid like i definitely watched that and i was like yeah i I'll be an adventure when I grow up. Fuck yeah. Yeah, like the message of the film really hit home just being like, don't listen to what other people say about what you want to do. So I just latched onto that whether I realized it or not. And like looking back, I'm like, yeah, you know, I fuck with that message, <laughs> you know. The next set of films that I watched was Dune part one and part two in succession. I, I watched Dune one and then the day after, the morning after actually, I watched Dune part two. Man, just a cinematic masterpiece. I'm just gonna talk about both of them as like one cohesive thing because it basically is one cohesive thing. I'm, I'm especially happy that I, I rewatched part one before watching part two, especially because I've sort of learned more about the world and the lore of Dune since seeing the first one in theaters. Dune 2 especially was epic in, in a way that I really have not experienced in theaters in, in such a long time. And I think that's partially due to the way that it sort of jumps through time spans very casually you know like like one scene will be like uh like a month apart from another and it'll feel like it was like moment to moment almost it's just like bam 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 the action is just so well done so well executed just all the effects especially love the Harkonnen homeworld with apparently a black sun which makes everything black and white and they also shot that in infrared as well it's just such masterful filmmaking overall <laughs> like Denis Villeneuve literally just never disappoints with his sci-fi arrival and Blade Runner 2049 being clear examples. It's not a weak performance in sight, especially Austin Butler's fade. It's just how he's such a weird little freak. <laughs> and he just, uh, like, like my favorite part of the film has to be when Paul repeats the may thy blade chip and shatter that the guy had said to him in the first movie. That guy, speaking of which, is in Star Trek. He's very good as Dr. Mbanga. But he says, may thy blade chip and shatter. And then just the, the way he's just like, he, it's almost like he's like, mocking him while at the same time he's just like amused that it's like a new thing that he's hearing that he's never heard before it's just such an engaging performance you know Hall's arc throughout the duology especially is just kind of insane I mean like in the first one it's obviously more of the introduction and he's sort of conflicted especially at, at the very end but throughout this second one he sort of has to sort of accept what's been set on him I guess I don't I don't know how else to describe it without spoiling too much just the visuals of the film like like it's just a cinematic masterpiece especially because i don't know if you've seen didn't even who uh, actually storyboarded this when he was like 13 years old so he's had a, a lot of time to to develop what he considers a, a passion project i cannot wait for dune part three dune messiah whatever whatever it's going to be called cannot wait <laughs> funny enough i saw dune part two in the morning like i might have said earlier and i had a little free time before i had work so i decided to maybe possibly walk into a showing of love lies bleeding directed by rose glass starring Kristen Stewart and Katie O'Brien as the leads. I really like the title, how it's almost like a double entendre, like, like a statement of what the film is about. Love lies bleeding, but it can also just be like a statement, like love lies bleeding, you know? But the chemistry between the two lead actors is palpable throughout the whole film. The plot is very engaging. For some reason, I don't know, it's almost like it's a thriller noir deal. I don't know. There's some unexpected body horror in the film. There's uh, like some minor use of, of steroids where you, know, you kind of sort of hear and see veins sort of popping and, and muscles growing almost. It's just a very interesting thing that I was not expecting in this film, you know? It's also a, just another visually stunning film. It's beautiful. It feels like it was shot on film. I'm assuming it's like digital and then emulated and whatever. I'm, I don't feel like looking it up. But the ending actually 
actually reminds me of uh, another Denis Villeneuve uh, movie, Enemy, where it sort of just comes out of nowhere. I won't elaborate any more on that. I want you to watch this movie because it is insane. <laughs> it's interesting. It's very interesting. I I, I definitely want to rewatch and sort of try to analyze it from like a certain lens. I feel like the director has a very clear idea of what this film is about. And it's something that I think me and a guy that I discussed the film a little bit with after the showing were a little miffed at, I suppose. And that has been it for the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and like I said earlier, I, I don't think I'm going to be making an April movies I watched video. Uh, and that is because I'm working on a new film. Uh, should be shooting sometime in the next couple weeks. And yeah. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, make sure to leave a like. And if you really did, make sure to subscribe. Um, try to check out one of the films or videos that are on screen right now. And I will see you in the next one. See ya.